But see, there was a well on. See, we had, we got 60 acres and 52 of it plus 52 more acres. It was a 104 acre farm. And then all the rest of it was sold off in pieces and that. I'm the only only piece of farm that was farming in that, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was punished. Them other people benefit because that one neighbor says, oh, thank you for putting them wells on your property because I get a check every month. I says, well, I wish you didn't. I said, I got mad about it, you know. Yeah. I said, I'm the one that got punished and you get a check for nothing. Are you collecting royalties? Yeah. It, the last check, I think, was $550. But what I lost in hay, 2008, I spent over $4,000 in buying hay because... I come to the wintertime, I didn't have no, enough hay fields. I cut everything that was there. I didn't have no hay fields left. Mm -hmm. And I was, I come down to winter, I had to go buy hay off of a guy. Well, I knew the guy pretty good, so I knew he had pretty decent hay in that. So I spent $4,000 in buying hay. Mm -hmm. That's why I had to go to this neighbor's now. I've been doing his fields and that. So I had to buy another tractor because I left a tractor up there to run six miles down the road. You beat equipment up, you know. And I don't have brand new equipment. I got older equipment. It's mm -hmm. good, you know. Mm -hmm. But I left one tractor up there, and then I was gonna. I got a rake up there, but it's just it's just costing me more money for what they did to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. And what's it costing for water? A hundred dollars a month. Right at a hundred dollars a month, I'm paying for drinking water. And then I didn't have. We didn't have none of these problems before. Before they come on the property, I didn't have none of these issues. You know, I didn't have to buy it. I didn't have to go get an attorney. I didn't, oh. I didn't have to make all these phone calls and that. You know, it just cost us money all the time. Yeah. When did uh, when did they begin drilling? When did Council begin drilling? Well, they they come on the property in right at the middle of November, and then they started drilling uh, of two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. But they, see, they come to my pro they come to the house there in the middle of the summer of two thousand seven. Said, "Well, we're coming on your property. We're going to do this." I said, "No, you're not." Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And then their threat, their what their solution was. Oh well, that one guy from Dooney, he says, he said, "No, he's trying to fight us." He says, "Cause, cause." They have more money than you. Dominion will win. Mm -hmm. You'll lose. That's what he said. I said, is that a threat? You threatening me in my house like that? He said, well, no, no. You know, but that's some of the things they said to you right there and that, you know, just all these, right off the bat. And then he says, he said, if you don't let us on your property, we'll go eminent domain and take your property. I should have said, go ahead. You know, I didn't know what to do. I, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so I went and talked to a couple of attorneys. They said, "Well, this is some kind of never-ending lease or something." But whoever thought they was going to do all these gas well drillings, mm -hmm. you know, around the whole areas and that, you know, and that's yeah, all you that, see. You know, nobody ever thought because this this lease was from 1921. This well was this old well on the not even on our property was from 1921. It's not oil well? No, it's a gas well. It's a gas well. Yeah, and it's not a deep well, and it was people's at the time. Mm -hmm. And now they're coming back and just. There's a gas well on every block, you know, now, you know. Everybody's yard got one in. And it, just the way they treat you, you know. If they'd treated you right, it would have been a different story. But they just come in and do what they want to, and they're gone. Even in the wintertime. That big snow. Well, there was a lot of tree limbs broke. You know how many tree limbs was all over the place? They brought a dozer in. I didn't know when they came in. They come in. It had to be on a Saturday afternoon. They come in with a dozer. My fence is right here. There's 10 foot of grass. They built a road. Then I... There's still a temporary fence up on the upper side because we've had to use it a bunch of times. All these tree limbs was down on the, on the road. They took this dozer, pushed all them tree limbs, and pushed the stone and pushed it all through my electric fence and busted all my fence up. So I called them. I said, I said, you can set these clowns down here to uh, push snow off the road. And they pushed all these trees through my through my fence. They said, well, what, do you, what are we supposed to do with it? I said, pick them up and move them. They said, that's your job. I said, no, it's not. I said... You pick them up and move them. I said, you pushed it through my fence and busted on my fence. So they sent somebody down. They took a chainsaw, cut all the firewood up, took the firewood, all the brush, threw it over the fence in the neighbors. So the neighbor, a couple days later, the neighbor says, what's all them trees up in my fence up in there? I said, you called Dominion. I said, Dominion threw all that stuff over in your property. And he has a nice field with a couple of horses in it. He got like 12 acres, and, mm -hmm. and it's part of this lease too. But they cut all the all the branches, threw them over in his place, and stole all the firewood. And I said, you just got a bunch of thieves up there, you know. That's yeah. why I, call, I call them vandals, thieves, and crooks. Mm -hmm. And I call them liars right to their face because mm -hmm. that's that's how they treat you in that, you know. But, yeah, they threw everything in his property. You Have know. you experienced any increases in crime in the area? No. we're uh, When we bought this place in 88, I didn't inherit it. We bought it. 
it's like this. It's out secluded. You know, it's back by itself. Yeah. So we we don't have no problem with crime up in our place. It's just what what they did when they come on the property. They did whatever they wanted to. They did all kind of crimes. Yeah. Uh, what about the local bars? Are, are the local bars? Uh, there ain't even no bars close to me. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go a couple miles to a bar. Okay. You know, it's two miles to a bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. So you haven't heard of anything increases in drunk driving accidents? No, our area is pretty. Arrests. Our area was quiet, but what, what, what a lot of the issues now. There ain't no good roads out our place anymore because all these trucks got them to work up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you said uh, you bought the property in '88. Did you yeah. live in the area prior to that? Well, we lived about twelve miles from there. Okay. Yeah, we lived about twelve miles from there. And how long did you live there? You lived this place since '88. Yeah. And before that, did you live there the rest of your life? Um. Uh, Pretty close to it. It was my grandpa's place. Okay. He had a small farm. We lived there. Then my aunt finally moved into it and that, you know. But we stayed there for a long, good many years and that, you know. But yeah, I was around the whole area and that, you know. Have you noticed any health effects uh, on yourself or your family or your children? You said you have... Well, that spring water, we're going to have to have it tested again because when we wash it, she washes the dishes now, it leaves a film inside it from that mm -hmm. spring. So I don't know if something's leaking into that water table now because that's the only water table we use. And the only thing we really used that spring for at the house was like for the showers, washing clothes, mm -hmm. and the dishwasher and that. Yeah, we didn't drink it. You know, we just drank the well water, but now there's there's no good water to drink on the property. We don't have any water anymore. Mm -hmm. It's everything that's bought and they bring in. So obviously this has uh, created a lot of stress on you and your family. <laughs> Big stress. Can that... you elaborate on that a little bit? Have you noticed any ill health effects from uh, from the stress? And Yeah, I get up in the middle of the night. I get up 2, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. I'll sit on the couch thinking of what they're going to do next, you know, what's going to happen, you know. And it, you don't know what they're going to do. And then they get they do whatever they want to. And who do you call? You can't call the police because the police will say, well, that you better get an attorney. They'll say the same thing. Mm -hmm. So they just get away with whatever they want to do. And it's hard, you know. Since they come on the property, it's been Dominion and DEP run, run our life. Mm -hmm. We haven't had to say so on nothing. Whatever they did, they did. Mm -hmm. So it's been hard. And my oldest son, he lives at home. He takes care of his water. he got to water them cattle. He uses that water buffalo and there's a hose going down to it. He spends two to four hours a day making sure there's water in them tanks seven days a week since... January uh, since about April of 2008 before that spring run all the time and there was water there all the time and that so you didn't have to worry about it you could go someplace for a couple of days if you had to because the cattle was okay in that mm -hmm. but now you can't go nowhere you know somebody has to be there every day now so it's it's been hard you know that's why he that's why he's so upset and he even said he says why this happened to us I said because they're greedy I said these gas companies are so greedy they don't care who they tramp on.